I hope you all are doing great. Uh, my name is Pradeep so Chatterjee, and along with my team members, Sitika Padek, Samutra Ganguly, and Tushar Raj, we have developed a algorithm and as well as a software with both the front end and back end connected. That software will be able to detect COVID. Uh, that whether a person is having COVID, uh, whether a person is COVID positive or he is COVID negative, and this will uh, we will do this entire thing using chest X-ray. So chest X-ray will be provided to the model, and chest X-ray will be provided to the model, and uh, the algorithm will then decide using CNN approach, and also we have used the VGG model to see uh, whether a person is having COVID or not. So uh, please next slide. Ritika, uh, next slide please. Yeah, so this is the actual content that we will be covering. I, I don't know whether it is lagging from my side. Uh, I'm not able to properly see it. So uh, I don't know. Tushar is there, but I will uh, I will cover this portion as well. Uh, this is a very basic introduction about COVID-19. COVID in 2019, we actually faced a huge amount of loss due to COVID. So in our personal life, in our family life, and in our uh, professional life, we, uh, we faced a huge loss. So definitely at that time, test kits were very costly. And not only not, they were costly, but RT-PCR test and all these things were not available that much. So we need to, uh, we need to about something else, so that's why we developed this uh, this approach, and this approach using this approach, it, it will be really very helpful for any layman that they can just go to any uh, any radiologist and they can just have a, have their chest X-ray, and uh, they can just click a normal image of the chest X-ray. They can upload the file to our server. Uh, we have both the Android application and web application available, and our model will tell uh, the backend will work, and the model will tell about. Uh, Okay, so I will request my other team members to continue. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Here we have given some tools which we are using for our Android and web web development, uh, like uh, Keras and some of the language uh, for our app development like python html css and javascript next slide first question what is cnn basically cnn is a Conventional net, uh, neural network. In our project, we use deep learning with algorithm to implement uh, background noise to to detect COVID with the help of X-ray image. Why we use CNN? CNN provides us high accurate uh, recognition re uh, result. CNN recognizes virtual patterns directly from pixel image with manual processing and more on. We have to uh, use this two approach. Uh, in CNN, first CNN approach, second VG, VG 16 approach. Next, <clears throat> our approach is first we collected uh, image data set, then we pro process uh, process uh, then we process them in two data set. Uh, first one is uh, training model, and other one is uh, testing data set. Then we trained uh, the model for testing 
and then uh, we uh, take X-ray image and classify them if the person is COVID positive or not. Okay, so uh, now actually we will discuss about the actual part. So rather than discussing this part in slide, I will request Lupita to move to the Google Colab portion. Here, uh, like please move to Google Colab. So basically, we have used some libraries in Python, and uh, the reason behind choosing Python is Python very e Python is very easy to understand, easy to implement, and as well as uh, very easy to uh, like. Uh, we we have all the data, all, all the libraries available. NumPy it will help for numerical calculation. Pandas will help us to pre-process the data and to reduce the noise in data. Matplotlib will help us to plot several graphs, and we have several other data set also. In sklearn, all the algorithms are there. Rather than that, we have used the sequential model here, which is also inbuilt, and we have used several layers. So some layers, uh, please please uh, scroll a little bit. So uh, rather, uh, we have used several mod, uh, several layers like con con convolution 2D layer. We have uh, some other layers like dropout layer. Dropout will, layer will actually uh, reduce some other unimportant things. Uh, we have some other layers like max pool 2D layer. So these are some basic layers. This is the actual convolutional uh, neural network architecture. The kernel size is 3.3 as you can see. And at first, the activation was ReLU, and then we have used the sigmoid activation. So, if we uh, see the result, so uh, or the summary, we can say you can see the increase in number of parameters. So, the number of parameters are increasing, and this definitely signifies that yeah, our model is uh, doing quite good. So, scroll, uh, scroll down a little bit also. So, here uh, you can see the epochs, the number of epochs are there, uh, how many epochs, and how many steps per. to uh, actually to fit to the model that we have just created and then we have evaluated the model. After that we have uh, plotted a simple graph that will help us to understand the accuracy and that will help us to uh, understand that uh, what is going on in this uh, actually uh, how the data is actually doing and what is the performance of our data. These are some basic graph and we have used Matplotlib here also. And then for testing the model it is very easy uh, that uh, like we have just all the data set in the Google Colab itself. Actually, initially the data was in, in Dropbox and we have imported the data from Dropbox in Google Colab using a very special command that is wget command. So using the wget command, we have imported all the data which was available in my Dropbox folder and then we have unzipped the entire thing and then uh, the data is, is uh, managed in such a way that it has training folder and it has validation folder. Inside the validation folder, we have again COVID positive and COVID negative folder, which contains all the values like uh, a person who is having COVID, uh, it will contain uh, all the images of COVID positive images and COVID negative images in such a way. And we just have, uh, right now it is not available because our data, our workspace is not connected yet. So it, it will not be available. We have to run all the cell and it will take a lot of amount of time. So that's why we will skip it. If you want, we can show it at the end of the session. So in this way, we have just copied and paste, pasted the path, and after that, uh, there is a very uh, popular method that that is the predict method. Using the predict method, we can easily predict whether a person is having COVID positive or not. So uh, this will help us to understand uh, the actual accuracy. And yeah, it is performing also quite good. Like the, uh, it is showing us uh, how many people like. Almost uh, we can say when the results were there, the epochs were there, uh, right now the number of data is uh, very minimum. So we have 250 to 270 data is present. So that's why it is performing really good. That is, it is giving us 100% accuracy on the validation data, which is outstanding. But uh, And we also cannot say that it is overfitting the model. Because overfitting, if we uh, if we plot the learning curve, it will definitely give us that yeah the model is not overfitting actually. It is actually uh, taking all the features. It is taking it is taking care of all the features. And also if if we talk about uh, some classification algorithm, and there also if we take care of all the features without doing the PC algorithm. PC algorithm is basically principal component analysis where we reduce the dimensionality. 
So if you reduce the dimensionality, it will then give you 95 to 97 percent accuracy. And if we do it without reducing the accuracy, which will take a huge amount of resource. But that is good because we have Google Collab and in Google server we will be deploying everything. So that is why it will give us 100% uh, accuracy. So the model is not actually overfitting but and uh, based on our data and it is calculating each and every feature and it is the performance is quite good, quite awesome we can say. So yeah and we are also trying to improve the functionality using uh, collecting more data and we are trying to add some more layers because our main purpose is to gain the new value and that is the thing. So not only this but also we have some other approach that is VGG16 approach. I will request Rizika to discuss about the VGG16 approach and how we have done, uh, done the same thing in a different way to test whether the accuracy is increasing or uh, like how it is varying. Uh, so finally, uh, next we have used VGG16 approach that is the transfer learning technique in order to detect if a person is COVID uh, positive or negative. So simply here we have uh, taken uh, the data set from the Dropbox and unzipped it. Next we have imported the important libraries from uh, like uh, like dot models and Keras dot application numpy for numerical operations matplotlib for uh, you know gra graphical representation of the data and so on and so forth. Uh, next year we are basically instantiating the VGG16 model. We are specifying the input size, input shape which we have specified as 256 comma 256 plus 3 because our image is in RGB. Weight we are specifying as image net because uh, uh, because we need pre-training on ImageNet. Next is uh, include top equal to false. So basically, this is used uh, to uh, this is this is used to to either include the last layer of the VGG16 architecture or in order to exclude. Here we are excluding. Next year we are actually freezing the layers. Next we are. Uh, uh, adding two layers, one is flatten and the other one is dense. Activation we are using uh, ReLU. So basically ReLU stops the negative values to pass from the network. Next we are using activation as softmax because it gives two output values, zero or one. So next we are uh, creating a model object here. When we check the model summary, we uh, see the input shape is uh, 256, 256 and here we can see that there are exactly 16 layers. So VGG16 is basically a convolutional neural network that consists of 16 layers. So here we can see we have two convolutional layers, then max pooling, then again two convolutional layers, max pooling, three convolutional layers, max pooling, again three convolutional layer, max pooling and again this three convolutional layers, max pooling, flatten and dense layers. Next we are compiling the model using model.compile method. We are using loss as categorical, categorical cross entropy and optimizer we are using Adam and matrix is accuracy. Next uh, we are using image data generator function. So basically this function is used for uh, augmenting images. Uh, augmenting means uh, generating different versions of similar image based on some of the parameters that we are going to specify here. For example, uh, rescale equals to 1 by 255, shear range we are specifying as 0 0.2, zoom range as 0 0.2 and horizontal flip is true. Now we are dividing the uh, data set into training set and the testing set. Using uh, flow from directory function, we are just loading the data set and uh, assigning it to the training uh, underscore set variable and test underscore set variable. Next, we are just checking the class for COVID it's 0 and for normal it's 1. Next, we are uh, using mod model.fit generator function and uh, 
epochs that is the iterations number of iterations we are specifying as five validation data is the test data training data is training set and uh, steps per epoch we have kept as five now here we can see that uh, loss is 0.9 for the first iteration accuracy 0.7 validation loss is 0.125 127 and so on and so forth next we are evaluating it and here we are plotting the model accuracy here we are plotting the model loss these are the same values that we have received over here in each epoch this is just the gra uh, graphical representation of that that part next in order to test the model we are just uh, specifying the path of any one of the image and uh, just using the model dot predict function in order to predict and here we get the result if the class is zero then covid positive otherwise normal so uh, this is about the actual model the actual back end implementation and this actual like back end implementation was done using python the implementation was done using python language and uh, we have used the deep learning as our uh, actual technology for back end we can see so now uh, this is for the developers uh, portion the entire thing is only for developers we are developer we can understand the code uh, we can uh, provide the path using uh, we, we can copy and paste the path we can do all this stuff but how the clients will be doing so this is the main portion that uh, how to develop the front end and how to make it more simple and more easier to understand we will be providing this software to layman they will be using this application doctors nurse and they will be they all all the other normal people they will be using this application so we have to develop a beautiful front end that is attractive that is functional and where we can use this uh, entire uh, back end web uh, back end functionality we can say so basically Uh, we have developed the android and web application both the things now for the web application part uh, since we are using python here so definitely the most uh, most easiest thing is we can uh, use python as well python only python for uh, implementing the front end portion for front end we have several choices like b django was one of the most popular option we have uh, streamlit it is is a one more library we have flask so now flask so we have actually used flask and why we have used flask the main reason is flask is one of the most easiest thing like if we know about html and css we can easily style uh, the entire front end and we can link the our application with the front end part using uh, the simple flask application and it is very easy very easy to implement and very easy to understand as well so that's why our web application was uh, made with flask and we have connected both the things now ritika can you please uh, discuss about the flask application what we have done and how we have implemented yeah so i'll just uh, jump into the code first and then show you the flask application so this is our main code we have used several libraries like cv2 cv2 is open source computer vision library which is used for image processing numpy as we know it's used for numerical operations keras it's used for uh, you know working on neural networks and finally flask which is a web application python framework so here basically here we are actually initializing uh, an instance of the flask object so your app dot root what it does is it maps the url to a specific function that will handle the logic for for that particular url next we have uh, used render template function so basically it is used for rendering the template the first argument that we pass here is the name of the template and the next uh, argument which we pass is the variable that we want to pass to the template engine and here finally we are actually executing the app using app dot run uh, this this was the basic uh, basic important lines of the code i'll now show the working of our actual web application
So basically, this is our landing page. And this is the main working of our application. From here, we have to choose a file. Uh, I've already uh, created two folders, COVID and normal. So suppose we are choosing any image from COVID folder and uploading it. It will show the result that uh, it's COVID positive. Again, if we go there and choose the file, something from normal. We upload it and get the result as normal. So these are our team members. And Excellent. That's all. Excellent. Okay. So next is our uh, Android application that will be discussed by Samudra. Good evening, everyone. So as a, as my team members have already mentioned. Apart from building the model and the web application, we have also developed an Android application since Android is in everyone's hands. So it will be quite convenient for the users if they can have an access to an Android application that will do the same purpose. So for the Android application, I'd like to present the screen to show the demonstration of, of our app. The Android application has been created with the help of Java and the UI has been created with the help of XML. So let me show the working of my app. So this is the splash screen of our application display the logo of our app. And here we have to click, click on the start button. So we've got two buttons. One is for uploading with the help of camera and the other one is for uploading from the gallery. So we also have the instructions for using this app. As you can see here, we have the camera button and the gallery button. So following these instructions, we can upload any picture. For example, let me show you by uploading my own x-ray. So here I am clicking on the camera button. And as you can see, this is my chest x-ray. And let me click a photo. Uh, let me click on OK. It shows COVID negative with a probability of 99.98%. And we also have the about section of our app where we have written some the, our purpose of creating this app along with the team members and our mentor. Excellent. So this is how our app works. That's it from my part. Okay. And Very good. Thank you.